morning. Morning. This is a day we all knew would come. It is a day we wish had never arrived. We are here to say farewell to a good friend and a great man, the incomparable Art Sioka. We all grieve Art's passing and pray for his entry into glory, yet none of us feels the emotion of this moment more strongly <clears throat> than the love of his life. Carlise, know that while our hearts are with Art, our, our, when our thoughts are with Art, our hearts are with you. You have our prayers and support, and you have our promise to honor your husband as best we can. How do you best honor such an incredible man and leader? How do you sum up the life and legacy of Art Sioka? This question has consumed me for years long before our dear friend passed away. My wish to do art justice began when he helped me found the Arthur and Carly Sioka Center for Principled Entrepreneurship at the Catholic University of America, where I have the privilege to teach. I wrestled with this question much more over the past two years. I was writing, as I was writing a book based largely on his life entitled The Art of Principled Entrepreneurship. The more I thought, the less I knew what our friend would want me to say about him. But then it struck me. In life, Art never wanted anyone to focus on him, just the opposite. He directed his focus upon others. That's what I think he'd prefer I do today. If there's a single phrase that describes Art Sioka, it is a man for others. He devoted his every day to serving and uplifting people, whether near or far. It was the secret to his success, his greatest gift to the world. Looking back, Art's relentless other directedness was clear from the moment I met him. It was about 10 years ago in Boston. A mutual friend had introduced us, and from the first handshake, Art captivated me. His eyes had a spark to them. He was expectant and excited and immediately directed his attention beyond himself. The conversation was a whirlwind. He must have asked 50 questions in quick succession. Every time I answered, he had an instant follow-up. Art had an insatiable desire to learn about my life, understand what made me tick, and figure out how he could help me grow and succeed. And to think he just met me. Eventually, I broke through and got Art to answer one of my questions. It was about his life, specifically his success in business. Yet even then, when Art talked about himself, it seemed like he was talking about someone else. He hardly ever said the word I. Instead, he always said we, whether in reference to his partner in life, Carlise, his partners in business, the wine group, or his partners in success, that is, the customers are, are served so well and so long. It made such a deep impression on me. Everything was always about others, and insofar as he inserted himself into something, it was always and only with the goal of helping someone else achieve more, go deeper, and rise higher. In fact, my all-time favorite phrase of arts was, I'm really starting to like this. He usually said it when he saw that you were doing something wrong and he had figured out how to make it right. With me, he typically said those words when he had major feedback about a chapter of the book. His feedback was blunt. It always made things better, though, and he always had, gave his thoughts in a positive, uplifting way. I wonder how many times Art said, I'm really starting to like this. Whatever the answer, I'm certain that those who heard it, were, whether friends or colleagues, were inspired and their lives improved. With art, you never got anything less. Art in impacted my life profoundly. I spent some time thinking about the number of people whose lives are better thanks to art. Millions of families 
are leading better lives because of him and what he did in business. His principled entrepreneurship and incessant drive to innovate quite literally changed the world for the better. He lived his own American dream by enabling others to find their American dream. Tens of thousands of K through 12 students are better off as well. Art and Carly's made it a priority to help kids find the education that was best for them. He once told me that education should focus on one thing, to learn about yourself, what you're good at and what you can excel at. Because if you know what you want to do, you don't wind up wasting a lot of time. He helped so many students find their best path in life. Thousands of college students are better prepared to transform our world because of art. Through the Sioka Center for Business, Ethics, and Society at Holy Cross, his alma mater, the Sioka Center for Inter Inter Innovation and Entrepreneurship at Santa Clara, and the Sioka Center for Principled Entrepreneurship at the Catholic University of America, he has provided for the training of future business leaders. As those students find their own jobs and found their own companies, they too will move society forward in incredible ways like Art Sioka before them. To put it simply, a man for others is raising a generation for others. Finally, the men and women sitting in this church are a testament to, other, to Art's other directedness. Everyone here has their own story, or 12, about him. Everyone here had the same experience with him in our own different ways. Whether it was over the phone or over a glass of wine, whether it was personally or professionally, we all saw and benefited from his drive to inspire and empower those around him. Each of us leads a life that is richer and fuller thanks to the friendship of Art Sioka. We miss him dearly, but we know that he planted seeds in us that will sprout and bear fruit as long as we live. Working with Art was among the greatest privileges I will ever have. He was like a father to me, and over the past two years, we worked together on a weekly, sometimes daily basis. We talked a lot about death and dying, and it was especially moving to witness his faith journey. Here was a man who in, the, in his later days experienced closeness to his creator, and as he drew nearer, nearer to God, his impulse to serve others only grew as well. His final thoughts were not of himself. They were of those around him and those further away whom he believed he could still help. As we discussed my giving this eulogy, he said two things. The first was to tell me to keep it short. I think I already violated that one. The second was his reflection on the values that shaped his life, being close to God and good to his neighbor. He said, and I quote, there's nothing more important than that. Maybe that's a thought that you might want to include in what you're going to say. It is no exaggeration to say that Art Sioka taught me how to die and in his dying, how to live. Everyone here could say the same thing let us devote ourselves to principled entrepreneurship and personal excellence, no matter our career or course in life. Let us put we before I and others before ourselves. There is no better way to improve our world and unleash human flourishing. Our friend Art Sioka wanted nothing more, and to honor Art, let us strive for nothing less. May God comfort Carlise and inspire us to preserve Art's legacy. And may Art hear now those beautiful words from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 25. Well done, you good and faithful servant. Come and share your master's joy. <laughs> <laughs>